This video is brought to you by Mazzola Designs, all made by myself. For the best football prints for any club, link down below, top of the description. The Tyne Weir Derby, or the Weir Tyne Derby. What is the actual correct way to say it? No one really knows, but they'll tell you anyway. Google says Tyne Weir Derby, shut up about it. My opinion, and somewhat biased opinion, for me, the time where Derby is the best Derby in English football. The only Derbies that come close that I can also accept as the best Derbies is Villa Blues. The, of course, the second city Derby. But in my time, I've done quite a few videos going into Derbies, ranking Derbies in England. And I've always put Newcastle Vitsen on the time where Derby always on top. In the more simplistic case, it is two historic, massive football clubs with gigantic fan bases without the plastic nonsense. There's no half and half scarves here and there's absolutely going to be no tourism. As a person that lived in Newcastle for two, three years, I can tell you that I know Newcastle fans that won't even wear the colour red on my life. However, sadly, for one fan base in particular, something has happened in the last 24 hours that has absolutely made this derby a mockery almost, and without a ball being kicked, have already lost a derby in most people's opinions. Newcastle can win 5-0, and the result won't even be the main thing they talk about. Here I present to you a picture. Now, this is a picture of the Sutherland Hospitality Suite. Due to it being the FA Cup, they allowed the allocation to be much more large than usual. Around, I believe, 6,000 Newcastle fans can go and travel over in um, bubble travel to go to the Stadium of Light. Now, this is a picture of a Sunderland Hospitality Suite, known as the Black Cats Bar. Now, this indeed is usually for the home fans, as home fans are in this area of the stadium. However, because they're going to open up more parts of the stadium for the away end, then they've been allowed to have this suite. They didn't have to, but they allowed them to anyway because they were paying more money. Now, what they did is they, they removed the Sunderland merchandise. The Sunderland branding, they got rid of it. For reasons that you can imagine, in case if it got destroyed in a derby, that's understandable. But then, this is in the Sunderland home end, technically. With a black and white chance, Newcastle chance, all over the shop, in their backyard. Now, I'm not even a Sunderland fan, but I'm embarrassed. Imagine if you are a Manchester United fan, and... For whatever reason, it's an FA Cup game and Liverpool gets given a bigger allocation. Or in hospitality, or in the away end, they start putting on the walls, you never walk alone. I can't see that going down well. It gets even worse that they are actually now crossing out their own history, almost. Their own way of life. Of course, if you're from the North East, and you may have heard the words, how are the lads, or how are the lads. And there is two different ways of saying it, as I learned quite quickly. That's if you're from Newcastle, you say, how are the lads, with a H-O way, the lads, basically. And if you're a Macam and you're from Sunderland, you say, ha ha. And if you're a Macam and you're from Sunderland, then you say, how are the lads, which is probably the term I think I hear most people say, and people confuse how are the lads as also part of Newcastle. Um, it's just a thing that most people think that is still a thing for both sides. It's actually really just Sunderland. Even still, they actually crossed out the term how are the lads, and they actually crossed out how are and put in, in black text, how are the lads. I'm probably saying it wrong, but I've not got a thick Jordy accent. I'm very sorry. Are you mental? They're crossing out their own history, for money as the entire reason why they're allowing this and for them to be allowing these suites in the first place because they don't need to do this they didn't need to give newcastle but newcastle is willing to pay the price give them all the money that someone wants so that newcastle fans have the best away day ever and they are bending over for them and as many people are saying giving newcastle the red carpet at the stadium of light and one last thing a bit of a niche additional point is in the window you can see a cheer up peter reed now you may have no idea what this means if you're not part of the area but this simply is a anti Sunderland chant that Newcastle fans sing towards Sunderland for basically mocking one of their previous managers. This was plastered in their own home end. How would you react if you saw this happen in your own home stadium? Because I find it truly incredible how this was even thought of, never mind actually accepted, approved, and then completed. Sunderland, the club, of course, said that this was a big mistake and they've now took them down. However, the photos still exist and that will now exist forever. No matter what happens to this game, they've already lost the bragging rights. You've literally decorated your stadium in your own fierce rivals' colours and chants. You've already lost 
I can't believe it. Why I hear, man. So let's get. I, I'm so sorry. For I can't do accents and I can't speak English to begin with. So this is a this is a bad idea. Now, for many people outside of the area, you may think of the town of Derby and you may think that well, Newcastle must be the bigger club and it must be the better club because I think a lot of people from outside the bubble perceive Newcastle as a bigger club than Sunderland, especially now in recent times. However, it is extremely close, and in terms of recent years, head to head wise, it's Sunderland. However, across their entire history, it's pretty much bang on. One of the only derbies in England that has a complete split 50-50 in terms of wins per team. 53 wins for Newcastle and 53 wins for Sunderland. This is a big derby game as this now guarantees one team to be ahead for the derby win. Now I'm sure someone may give me a stat that there was like a friendly game that was not counted but I don't care. This is just what Wikipedia says. And by honours it's also extremely close. Uh, Sunderland have won more first divisions however Newcastle has won more FA Cups. This puts Newcastle ahead by two trophies. A double is also something important to remember as getting a double on your rivals is also very nice to have as for example between Cardiff City and Swansea City they never had a single double in their entire history of their rivalry however this was changed last year and you may say well Newcastle have more fans I don't think that's even really given to they got a bigger stadium however both have got extremely massive and very fierce fan bases and by the way this may sound like it's anti Newcastle but it's just because I think people just instantly think Newcastle are therefore bigger and better but I think that people don't realize how close it actually is oh yeah fans Let's talk about that. One of the most famous fan pictures that you may have ever seen is this picture here. It's a picture of a man punching a horse. This is a notorious picture from the time of Derby back in 2013, which Newcastle lost at home 3-0 to Sunderland. The Derby gets so wild that they are even punching horses. And to add on top of this game, due to Newcastle losing 3-0, there was indeed riots after the game and there were four police officers injured and 29 arrests was made. This of course is common in most time with derby. This game is the reason why bubble travel is insisted. Of course, particularly in England in the 80s and 90s, hooliganism was rife. Of course, continued into the 2000s, especially the early 2000s. As in 2002, this regarded as one of the worst hooliganism cases in English football history. Two separate firms on both sides, the Seaburn Casuals on Sunderland side and the Newcastle Gremlins on Newcastle side. Both these fan bases arranged a fight in North Shields. This wasn't even for football, this was simply because I support this team and you support that team. It's stupid. But this did happen. 28 people were arrested and the leaders of both firms were jailed for four years. However, this did not slow down these two firms as something similar happened in 2003 in which both Newcastle and Southern fans both fought with the police. For 2004 qualifiers for an England game, Newcastle and Sunderland fans both were arrested to watch the game and 95 arrests was made. And when the police arrived, missiles were thrown at them from both sets of fans. And of course, there's been some big goals in the time with Derby for both sides, but more recently in recent memory for Sunderland, as the most obvious ones is Jermaine Defoe and his volley back in 2015-16. And that goal to make it even sweeter was actually one of the goals that sent Newcastle down that year and in previous years too, a marvellous goal by Burini. And of course, the 3-0 victory at St. James's Park. They've had a good fun years over there. However, Newcastle in the 2000s and 90s had some great times as well. The most iconic for many people is Alan Shearer's last goal for the club as he scored a penalty to win 4-1 at the Stadium of Light, and that was his last goal in his footballing career. For me, this is the best derby in England, and the only ones that I can say is even better than this or on the same level is, of course, Villa Blues and for me that's really it. Of course Rangers Celtic that's a whole different level and I would say that's probably above this of course. The only issue I would find with Rangers Celtic is how common it's played and it kind of makes the derby feel a bit less special as it happens three four times a season i just feel like when it's a derby which happens less often i find that it does add a lot more spice to it as you know that if you lose you may not get a chance to actually redeem yourself for years and i think that does add more threat to this derby this is the first time that they have played each other competitively in a league for nearly eight years so whatever happens tomorrow it would be a great game. Tell me what do you think will happen. I just felt like talking about this. Of course, the entire Sutherland carnage at the Stadium of Light led me to do this video because I felt like it was stupid and I felt like I had to say something because I find it stupid myself. However, I'm looking forward to seeing the game and um, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. Smash the like button, subscribe if you're new and of course, Mazzola Designs, you can probably tell with 
all of it behind me and no matter what result is on this game you can be sure there'll be a prince being seen later on that evening so i'll see you there enjoy your day boys